Hey, what's up everybody? My name is John Hammond and welcome back to another YouTube video and tutorial. We're still looking at the basics of Python. In the last video, we just made a real simple Hello World program. We got to take a look at comments and stuff in the Python syntax, and that's awesome. We're moving right along. We're going to take a look at data types, like simple, literal, constant data. In our last video, since we just displayed and sent it to, uh, sent to standard output Hello World, we did that with a string. And... I'm just, just going to save a new script for us. I'll call it data types.py. And let's take a look at all of the other options for data types. I'm just going to make all of these comments. I did that with control plus in sublime text. And we've got strings that we're working with. And strings are just like letters or text or paragraphs or any kind of information that we're representing by text and information. Hello world right now is a prime example of that. And we're denoting that in Python syntax with these double quotations, double quote marks. Hello world. And that is a string. Equal sign. We can do that same thing with a single quote. This is also a string. And that's just information held in this string right here. I can print that out just as before. We run this, and it says this is also a string. Because that's that's it's just that. It's just that easy. It's easy, it's easily letters, text, information. Strings are really just multiple characters, and character can just be a single letter. Normally that's the, that's that's what's normally denoted by a single quotation mark right here. And that's just A or B or C or D, but it's just one of them. That's kind of just one character. Strings are multiple characters just put together. Like, since strings are multiple characters put together, we can index them at individual characters. Right now, if we're setting string to equal hello world, if I were to take a look at string dot, I'm indexing with these braces here, zero, that should return a single character H. Computers are zero based, so we're counting with zero. That will be the first index, the first letter or portion or character of that string. String 1 would be the second, and that would be E, and then etc, etc. 2 would be L, etc, etc. You can index them just like that and get the individual characters out of them. Simple stuff. There is, of course, numbers, though. There are also numbers that we're working with as literal data. And those can be, for one thing, integers. And integers are integers. They range, like, from negative infinity to positive infinity, and they include zero, but they're always whole numbers. Zero, one, etc., etc. But it's not a fraction. It's not a decimal. It's always a whole number, just like that. Floats are what they call anything else that actually is a fraction or a decimal, like negative 3.14, or 3.4, or 2. Point, or 3.4, oh my gosh, 2.4, etc., etc. They can have any uh, other amount of decimals as they would want. We can print those out as well. Let's just take this guy. Print him out. Run it with control B and it's just printed out just fine. We're just getting that centered output and displaying that data. Since these are numbers that we can work with, we can obviously do things with them as well. Just operate on this data. If we wanted to, just like math, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And it's interesting, though, when we do that, I can say 3 plus 4, good, and that gives me 7. I can say 3 minus 4, and that gives me negative 1. 3 times 4, and that works just fine, we get 12. But if I do 3 divided by 4, I get 0. But we know that it's not really 0. Why is that? Normally it should be like, like you know, 3 fourths. It should be a fraction. But why is Python telling us it's 0? Well, that's because we're using integers to do this math. So Python's going to give us an integer back. If we gave it 3.0 or 4.0, it tells us, oh, it's 3 fourths. It's 0 0.75, the actual decimal value. There's also uh, another operator, which is the two division signs, which that's just floor division, so it'll round down. I think 3.0. And that'll round down, rather than giving us 0 0.75, it'll round that decimal down to just straight 0, 0.0. Pretty much it. We can operate on data not just with numbers, though. We can still have strings that work in a multiplication and stuff. 
Like we can say John ten times, and we get John, 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 John. We can add strings together, like John plus Hammond, get my name, and now it displays John Hammond. Cool. It's interesting though, because because strings are denoted in this way with single quotes or double quotes, anyway, like that. If I use single quotes inside double quotes, they'll be represented correctly. If I use double quotes inside single quotes, they'll be represented correctly. I'll do it with just the ham in the string. Now they're represented correctly. But what if I wanted to have double quotes inside of double quotes? What if for whatever reason I was having Python like display stuff from a book right now? It's not actually going to be able to display that. Like if I wanted to have dialogue, if I wanted to say, John had said, hello world. It's going to give me an error because, and you can even see my syntax highlighting is going like freaking out because it's not able to figure out what string really starts where. Because we're using these double quotes inside of double quotes, Python is going to interpret these as the end of the string. So we can get around that. We can actually escape these quotation marks that we actually want inside of our string or inside of our output right now. We do that with a backslash character. Backslashes will escape certain characters. In this case, we'll use it on our quotation marks. So now, when we print this out, John had said, hello world, and we're able to see those quotation marks just fine. Well, what if we wanted to actually use a backslash character in our string, though? We could escape that. This is a backslash. And then a backslash backslash will now print out the backslash for us. We can also get a new line, backslash n, escape characters, backslash n will give us a new line, backslash backslash to get a backslash, backslash t will get us a tab character. So now this is further forward, just like a tab character in Sublime Text or any other text. And that's pretty much it. You can look more of these up in, like, online, obviously. If you wanted to do Python escape characters. There's some information on it, and you see they're doing the same thing we are doing with these backslashes. And here's a whole chart of them. You can get the double quotes, single quotes, just like we saw earlier, the new line, tab character, vertical tabs, etc., etc. That's pretty much it, though. That's data. We've got strings, numbers, and we can add them together. We can do operations on them, etc., etc. So, cool. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I know it's real simple stuff. I'm just trying to crank out the basics, but it's got to get done. So, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.